I appreciate it. Uh, pastry time. Uh, we're going to try and make sense of this one. Before we do, though, I just want to take a look at the second to last fight, the one that got uh, allowed the uh, ANX to secure the third inhibitor there. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this one as insanity ensues. I mean, for so long, they were just knocking on the doors here, and Gorilla does go aggressive, looks for that big engagement, but because it doesn't result in anything, they're able to isolate Prey and just delete it. Exactly, and this is what they were trying to do for so long, is get a flank onto Prey. Smurf, he missed a bunch of opportunities earlier, because once you have the base wide open like that, it's so easy for the Poppy to have access to the backline when you're sieging. And and I just want to echo what the Fisher was saying. It was so hard to watch Smurf sometimes when he wasn't going for those flanks. You're like, come on, boy, get in those flanks, zone him off. But he gets the most absolutely crazy, bonkers puppy Ws I've seen in this entire tournament. The amount of times he just completely outclassed Peanut. I think it's going to happen right here when Peanut is a hair away of killing a miracle, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, this bloody combo really comes out here, here, and he blocks the combo, he blocks the so Ws. Good. It's so insane. This guy is so much fun to watch. But that's what coordinated team fights look like, and I mean, time and time again, this Elvis Knox lineup just looked like they're on the exactly the same page. And when you can do that against a team like Rox, who just kept coming at them, credit to Rox, well, that's incredibly impressive. And that's the thing. You talk about stacking up against the Rox, Tigers, and team fighting, right? That, I mean, this is the squad that we're saying, tournament favorites coming in, Part of the reason why that was is because of how well they orchestrated team fights and they get beat here. It was also the fact that they had a lot of good early game advantages for themselves, but we've not been seeing that here. They're still 0-5 in their five games. So Rocks Tigers, they are not playing like they did in the LCK. It's actually very uncharacteristic of them. But if, they, if you look at Albus Knox, they, there was also plenty of mistakes in there. And I just don't want to focus on that. I just want to highlight the mistakes where if Kira, for example, was wasting summers, but the biggest thing is it didn't affect them. Mm -hmm. Every new fight they win as if they were just Albus Knox Luna, the constant aggressionist team. They never tilted off any of their mistakes, even though they had plenty of reason to. And just the story from these guys, like they, they came from their own region. They barely play any games in their region. They have 14 regular season games, eight games in playoffs. Then they went super close in the IWC qualifier against Leon Gaming, like two and three, I think they made yep. it out right there. They were not even supposed to even be at this tournament, many people would say and then they smashed his group like this. But this team continues to buck the trend. I mean, 2-3 in the LCL uh, final. Then Red Side had won every single game in the IWCQ. They get blue in the last game. It looked like it was all over, and they managed to scrape their way in. I mean, I just can't echo enough, like, you know, you see the Zonyas, you see the Burnt Summoner spells, and you see player cams, and you're like, oh, that's a moment. They're going to fall off the face of the earth, and it just never happened. And they just mentally reset every time, and then more importantly, like, they had troubles getting scrims. Like maybe oh, yeah. people have like a lot of people have heard about this already, but like they couldn't even scrim teams because nobody deemed them worthy enough to be even worth some practice. Half of these guys were playing World of Warcraft <laughs> while warming up for this tournament, and then they smashed this group. Like it is, like this is history we're witnessing. Yeah. These guys were not supposed to do this well. Absolute history. I mean, we have our first team qualifying to the quarterfinals in this tournament, and it is one of our wild card teams, and they are just destroying everybody left and right. I do want to take a look from our Acer replay here at the early game yeah. domination, the visitation mid by PvP Steos, where he made his mark. And this is just communication. Wait for the spear. I'm going to flash to slow. It's going to be easy, and we're going to clean him up. Time and time again, this duo, we're just able to get it done. And this was such a really good dive as well. Steos off to the side, doesn't get stunned, gets bopped over and curved. Yeah, and quite Let's Kira take aggro first. Sorry. Quite a few players as well in this tournament, no worries. We were saying how it's really hard to hit skill shots against some of these players, and Steos was throwing the perfect spears, and it's a really easy on, on this low ping to dodge spears, but he throws them slightly in front of enemies, so they all have to do a minor juke and they still eat them. Like, it must be so satisfying to like consistently land skill shots against like the Korean overlords. And what I love is watching the growth that they've actually gone through. Like you think about their first matchup against Rox, it was Peanut going into the jungle, a little bit disrespect there on stay host, then they turned it around and Rox was like, hold on, we have to actually respect these guys a lot. And then in this game, you actually saw stay host go for early invades on the Peanut, not fearing him at all. He was so close. There was a war that barely spotted him. Otherwise he would have level two red buff cheesed uh, mm -hmm. Peanut and just Throw up in the game right there. And you want to talk about some more great in-game communication. Look no further than 26 minutes in. Up in the top lane, Rocks Tigers looking to make a move on ANX. But Smurf here playing this so calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, it certainly does. I mean, he kites back, and you think this is going to be it. I mean, Prey gets not one, but two, but three traps. Yeah, beautiful ulti is their mid-animation to it. The fact that he has the presence of mind to step over the trap, but here as a team, they call the turn. So many players would say, I got you, let's run. Another beautiful spear from Steos. They find Prey and suddenly this fight is turned upside down and guess what? It's another Baron 
for Albus Naxxuna. And it doesn't stop there. I mean, this team also blind uh, steals away an Elder Drake. Another creative play that really got them a ne uh, next opportunity at Baron. Time and time again, they're pushing creeps into the lane, disappearing into Fog of War. Their macro game is incredibly solid. Exactly. When they were able to actually push up those lanes, they knew what they had to do and which lane they needed to rotate to in sequence. They weren't wasting a whole lot of time. The game did go on really long, but that's mostly because of the fact that there were a whole bunch of those mess ups that, you know, happen for one person every now and then. And it looks so easy sometimes when you look at the map like, ah, why don't they go mid, you know? Why not? Mid's wide open. Why don't you just stop it? But having been in those situations, it's so incredibly hard to not only keep an overview and be able to play on the edge of dangers. Very often they were playing within combo range of Gorilla on three different, like, at least one guy while they were pushing three different lanes. The fact that they have the presence of mind and the trust in their teammates that somebody will not get caught, have a Zonias, be able to flash out and can trade that pressure for an inhib, like, they guys, they, these guys function like a team. It's just so wonderful to watch. Yeah, and a lot of rocks, they rely on the playmaking of Gorilla, but his Alistar was completely shut down by really well-timed flashes and people also having that Poppy W come out from Smurf mm -hmm. and stopping him is really good and stopped Rocks from actually turning a lot of fights. Well, you just already began to touch on it there, but player of the game going to Smurf for the numerous Poppy Ws that, that saved things. So that replay we saw was basically a highlight for him, presence of mind to slow the game down. Yeah, and, and I love the league. fact that he knows when he has to go in, but he also knows when he has to save his carries backside. And time and time again, this guy was able to do both in very quick situations. It's honestly really nice to see his decision making in game. Right now, of course, I know a lot of people would like to hear from a member of a &X right now as they did just qualify, but unfortunately, they have to play another game. So we're giving them the time to set up and gear up for one more game on the day. So gentlemen, looking forward though, I mean, this, this a &X squad is already into the quarterfinals. I mean, what, what, if anything, now you're tasked with taking down this squad? Who do you attack? How do you prepare against Albus Knox Luna? I, I've, I've lobbied for G2. I've said this is a time to turn it around. I, I give up. I don't even know anymore. Maybe just ban the puppy. I don't even mean for G2. I just mean knowing that they're in the quarterfinals, right? They have another five, best of five series now against another team. How are you now approaching this best of five against Albus Knox? Yeah, I, I mean, you guess you have to have a look at the mid lane jungle synergy and, you know, prop, if, especially if you've got a weaker mid lane, they're going to look to attack that. And I think it's more about like understanding what their strategy is and then playing towards and a little bit more reactive. In, in a best of five, I would open up with a, with a Brand, Nidalee, Brand, Ban, Nidalee contest at least. Don't give it to Stales. Then take maybe one more count, uh, comfort pick. I don't think the Bard is that much of an issue on only Creed. I think people need to pivot from this triple support ban. Just take away the, the wild card in the definition of the word, not the team, yeah. in the Brand pick. And then let him play whatever else. Like Tom Kench is still in the Tom Kench. Final yeah. thoughts. I think that you ban Poppy out or yeah. you take it away. Because I think Poppy is kind of a crutch for a lot of top laners right now that may not be performing really, really well and have a a lot of mistakes come out from them, but it gives them a small margin of error and they're able to actually make those mistakes and still be effective in the game. All right, first team to the quarterfinals and it's Albus Knox, Luna G2 and Albus Knox going to square off for the final time here in San Francisco when we return in three and a half minutes. We're getting set for the fourth match of the day between Albus Knox, Luna and Rox Tigers. Here we go, mid! All of a sudden the action, Q's gonna hit! Stay up, see this first blood for ANX! Peanut looking for it, Smoke gonna try and keep him out. Peanut wants it, throws the needle, goes back in. Peanut looking for the steal, he does it one more time. Smurf gonna try and kick them out, he gets one. Oh my god, the Indian goes down. Peanut trying to cut a miracle, but Brace dead. Oh my god, they did it. ANX just took down the Rocks Tigers. Dare to be different. Revel 